Hey everybody, so we're pouring concrete again today. This this video is going to be about pouring a concrete floor and it's about a 2100 square foot concrete floor that's got radiant heat tubing in it and we're going to be using a pump truck today. So what we're doing right now, we call this dangle pumping. Let me know down in the comments, what do you guys call this, that, that pour concrete? Do you call it dangle pumping or do you call it somebody else? Also down in the comments, let me know if you've never used a pump truck before. You know, let me know that too. We, we use a pump truck pretty often, I'd say probably 30, 30 times a year maybe. So I don't know if that's a lot to you guys or not, but most of the job sites that we work on, we can back a truck up to and use our chutes. But occasionally, like this one, the access isn't very good and we gotta use a pump truck. So we'll get the concrete in there, you know, and you can see we're, we're matching the top of the foundation wall. This, this house has a, what we call a frost wall under it. So it goes down below the ground about four feet and it sticks up about a foot. So it's about a five foot foundation wall. Then they just backfilled it all and put the, the floor right on top. So it's got two inches of styrofoam under it. You can see it's got the radiant heat tubing in it tied to the, some wire mesh. And what we're doing is we're using, we're using a 3000 PSI concrete for this floor today. It's got microfiber in it also. It's got water reducer in it so we can pour a, a pretty workable slump what we call about a six inch slump, six and a half inch slump. That's what we like to pour. And then uh, what we do is we, you know, we'll pump out, this has got three loads, three different trucks. So we, we usually like to pump out a truck, get rid of it. And then we'll, you know, get, let the second truck back in while we screed and, and level out the first truck. So what we're doing right now is we're just going through you know the area of the floor that has the most pipes actually it's it's a pretty wide open floor for our house not much plumbing in there just in two two different sections but we like to get the first truck dumped out then we'll get all our edges magged we'll shoot our wet pads using my laser i'm using a, a topcon rl h5b for a self-leveling laser over there and that's what we're doing to shoot our wet pads in the middle and as you can see we just screed right off those wet pads we don't use pipes we don't use anything else to screed off from. You know, that's just the way we were taught was to screed off wet pads. So we're using a 14 foot straight edge today and we're doing what we call kick screeding. So we kick and fill in our footprints as we're screeding backwards. And it's it's a pretty fast way to screed. I mean, it's just the way we were taught. It's kind of old school, but you know, it's the way we were taught. Two guys on the screed, one or two guys raking. And we can, we can screed quite a bit of concrete pretty fast. So once we get it all screeded like that, you know, we're going to run the bull float over it, smooth it out. We're also going to, you know, we're going to power trial finish this floor today too. That's not, that's not going to be on this video, but if uh, you come back for the next one, it, it'll probably be on the next video. I'll show you how we power trial this thing. And for you guys that don't know me, you know, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors. We specialize in all types of concrete flat work, floors, slabs, stamp concrete patios, pool decks, walkways, we do uh, epoxy floors, we do a lot of concrete repair, and that's what my channel's about. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, I'd appreciate it if you hit that red subscribe button, and then hit the little bell notification. I come out with a couple videos a week, trying to teach you guys as much as I can about concrete stuff. If you, and if you find any value in these videos at all, you know, please hit the like buttons. The like buttons tell YouTube you guys like these videos, and they they're more apt to show them to more people that way so we can get out and, and teach more people, show more people. And you can you can help me out with that by hitting that like button. I'd appreciate that. So we're getting this screeded. You can see we go around a, a little pipe like that. We get a stop and mag floated out smooth. And I, I'm striking a wet pad right there from one bay to another pad I shot with a laser so the guys screeding can, can finish out that concrete that we dumped out while we're waiting for the third truck to roll in you can see how screeding like that can be pretty fast I mean I know I've, I've seen quite a few other guys on here screed by themselves with like a, a 10 foot or a 12 foot screed and and that's all fine I mean if that's the way you were taught that's fine too and I'm sure you're pretty fast at it but for us this is this is the way we do it when we don't use a vibra screed and it's it's pretty fast you know we can we can straight edge a, a 10 yard truck 
you know, in just a matter of a few minutes, really, with two people like this. You can see how fast it goes when you can just kick your kick your holes from your feet as you're going backwards. You can do a 14-foot bay there in seconds, really. I mean, 30 seconds or so if you get a couple good rakers. And that dangle pump, you can see how easy that makes it. It just puts the concrete right where you need it. So then, you know, we got, we got a guy, Luke right there is coming behind him, and he's just raking it out, getting it as level as he can by eye. And then we'll put the laser to it and, and laser our wet pads. So I'm magging the edge to the top of the wall over there. We always like magging our edges. It just makes the edges nice and clean. It makes them easier to screed off from. We got a garage to do here too, as you can see that garage behind me, it's got, that's got a couple trench drains in it. So that video will be coming up later. You can see that concrete truck's backed right up to the pump and he's, he's dumping concrete right in the hopper. And the pump operator there, he can put it right where we need it. You know, pumping for us, a pump truck like this for us costs about 850 bucks to get the pump truck there and then it takes just about a yard of concrete to fill that pump truck before it comes out the end of the end of the pipe so you got to add that cost on to getting a pump truck because that's pretty much wasted concrete so you know for us that's you know about a hundred another 120 bucks for a yard of concrete so it's just about I tell people it's about a thousand bucks to get a pump truck on site that's why, you know, we try not to use a pump truck every day. Definitely if we can reach it from the chute or, or put on a 10 or 12 foot cold chute. There's no sense of wasting a thousand bucks if you can just pull the concrete with a chute and get it there too. But this one, this one, it was just a little bit, a little bit further access than what we wanted. You can see we did that patio on back too. So we, there, we couldn't get a truck around back. So that would have been too much pulling. So pump truck was definitely the answer on this one so there you can see us striking that pad that's how we strike our pads from the edge out to the wet pad that I make with the laser and that gives us something to screed off from and we're screeding kind of off you know we're tipping that straight edge slightly back so we're kind of screeding off the back edge of it we're not digging in with the front edge Otherwise, it would really pull the concrete apart and make it harder to bull float. When we screed off the back edge, it, it fills in better. It, le it leaves the surface a little bit smoother that way, so it makes bull floating a lot easier. It also makes it a lot easier when everybody on the crew knows how to pick that screed up and just go with it, and then everybody's also a good raker, so that's, that speeds the whole project up right there when you got four or five guys that all really know what they're doing. Who, let me know how many guys you got on your crew down in the comments. You know, I got, this is, we got four here. T is actually running the camera today, so five. Sometimes I'll, I'll pick up an extra summer person, so I'll get up to maybe six in the summer. But mostly, mostly in the winter, it's just the three of us, me, Darren, and Luke. And then we can network with a couple other crews if we need an extra guy or two. We can we can pull a guy in from another crew for a pour if it's a big pour. So we'll get that bow floated. We got that one last bay to come down. And then that's that's you know that's what dangle pumping is. It just pumping right off the end of the pump truck not having to hook up any pipes or anything like that just that one hose on the end of the pump you know and he can reach out there that that's about a I think that was about a 35 meter pump is what they call it so it he's got about a hundred feet of reach roughly there's a good shot of that laser I'm using right there once I get done bull floating I always mag where I pick up the bull float, it leaves a little bit of a line. You can almost see it right there. So we like to get that all magged out nice and smooth. The guys are finishing screeding that one last little bay. And then they'll get that magged out, then I'll run the bull float over it. 
Well, that's that's it, guys. That's how we pour, you know, a 2,100 square foot concrete floor for the using a dangle pump. And you know, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit subscribe. Come on back for my my next videos. And thanks for watching. We'll we'll see you on the next one.